We're bringing Tom and Jerry to the big screen in a way you've never seen before. This is a childhood dream come true. I, I grew up on these cartoons. And I think anytime you watch these cartoons, even me getting back into them, they just make you smile. Probably before I even could really comprehend cartoons, I started watching Tom and Jerry. I could remember growing up on my granddad loving Tom and Jerry and my mom and my brother and me also. So generations, this is a story that so many generations connect with. I definitely grew up with Tom and Jerry. Um, they're an institution. Like most people I gather here, there is part of my childhood. There's a certain charm to Tom and Jerry that I can't quite put my finger on. We love Tom and Jerry mainly because they're like best friends through competition. I think it's very endearing. Tom and Jerry have been popular for, I think it's going on 80 years in almost every diff different configuration. I'm 42. Uh, which means that I watched a lot of Tom and Jerry as, as a child and was crazy about them. Tom and Jerry is an old classic, which I've loved since a kid. You know, we've all grown up with Tom and Jerry. I think we love these characters because when it comes to humor and just um, the history of, say, uh, physical comedy, all of that, they just embody Tom and Jerry come out of an era of Laurel and Hardy and Abbott and Costello. The live-action comedies were very, very influential to all the animators making cartoons in the 1940s and 1950s. That's one thing that makes these characters special as a duo. They're like a silent comedy team. <laughs> there was a kind of magic to this duo, the two characters you would know, the yin and yang, back and forth. But I think what that means, it plays really well for the whole family. Basically making a hybrid movie uh, that takes basically the old animation style of Tom and Jerry and we're putting it into contemporary New York City. So what I like about a hybrid film is it really allows us to bring all of the kind of crazy physicality and stunts from the original cartoons uh, into the real world. I think what that does is it makes for kind of a heightened reality. We have these vibrant classic cartoon colors and characters coexisting in the world that we all know. It's in the hallowed tradition of animation and real people collide in a very exciting way. And what I like in this is that there's that juxtaposition between the humans and the animals, and we're maintaining the integrity of how Tom and Jerry was always portrayed. I really haven't been in a movie like this that synthesizes these elements in a, you know, in a, in a cartoon that uh, I grew up on and loved. Was the camera on for that? Okay, good. Okay, got it. I just want to make sure it was turned on. So we're shooting the picture in London for New York City. We're here in the middle of a field, pretending that we're in Central Park, otherwise known as Slough, Slow, Slough, England. Slough, right? Something like that? Slough, something like that. We're somewhere in England. We, we know that, right? One of my first jobs was an advert for Warner Brothers, for the Harry Potter studios. And I remember it being like this amazing experience, thinking, imagine coming here and this was your job. Five, six years later, I'm now here doing my first studio feature. So just the whole vibe of it has, has been amazing. We're actually building a massive street of New York in the back lot here. It's uh, about four square blocks. And I think with that and with some of the reliance, of course, on visual effects, we'll blend these two worlds and it'll feel like, it'll feel like New York for sure, but also I hope it feels like a bit of an idealized version of New York. It's New York City, so you gotta have rats. Um, we're filming this in London, so I can say, you know, New York is basically a rat-ridden hellhole, and uh, London, where we're making the film, there's no rats. Um, <laughs> there's rats. Uh, It was important to have the animated characters be in 2D because we wanted to stay as true as we could to the original cartoon. I'm Rob Stevenhagen, and I'm a head of story. The story department is sort of responsible for visualizing the script. Each shot is basically drawn. At the end of the day, that will be the blueprint of the film. All of us, the story team, have been working, first of all, on paper, a lot of the time post-it notes. Uh, the reason is so that uh, a lot of artists can contribute this way. And then we'll pitch it at this stage to the director, Tim. And sometimes Tim will be like, remove this one, they remove this one. He'll be like, let's move this one here, let's move that one there. So it's because it's physical, 
it's much easier to sort of like for everybody to infuse their own concept of that sequence. From drawing on paper, we're actually now moving into the next stage, which is SketchFizz. Uh, basically, SketchFizz incorporates us using the live action plates and dropping in the actual animation elements. And this will uh, fall on the basis for uh, a reference guide to the animators. So we get an animatic of the boards, which is drawings cut roughly to time to give us some idea of timing we make sense of 2D drawings in a 3D space. I think they're also just really cute characters. The designs are really an achievement in animation. Anybody who's been in animation for a long time recognizes the purity of the forms of Tom and Jerry. We're kind of referencing a lot of the animation that came from the Fred Quimby period around the 1940s. I mean, at that period of time, the animation that we saw, that we all grew up with, was absolutely powerful, rich, funny, incredible in every way. So that's what we're referencing in terms of a guide. And so, yeah, when I draw this stuff, I. I think about those guys, and, and then I think about me and all of us here as little kids just glued to the TV watching Tom and Jerry cartoons. They're just so well-crafted. This is actually one of my favorite episodes, which is uh, Jerry and the Goldfish. And then we have a gag where I found it hilarious, even as a child, where Jerry goes through the ear and the eyes and then goes into his hole. And so I had the opportunity with this sequence to actually add that. I lifted the entire gag and just added it myself. The director is very confident and he knows he has a good team with all of us. We have a lot of experience in story. We worked on many films and uh, Working on Tom and Jerry uh, for Warners is, is uh, a dream come true for many of us because a lot of us come from a 2D background. It's a fun world, it's a fun scope. I think the, the textures and the colors of it too, being hand-drawn, it's really decadent to watch. <laughs> the sound of the old time. Uh, we have a great cast, we have Chloe Moritz. We get to see her do a lot of comedy. Is just a wonderful person to have in this role. I'll catch it, sir. Him or her. And I'm not gender biased. No, 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 of course not. Chloe's fantastic. She's been acting for a long, long time, and she's only 22. Awesome. She's got crazy good range. She can go big. She can go very grounded if you want to. So just go ahead and pull it back. Yeah, pull it back and just sort of let it rip. It's 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 awesome. No, please! Oh, Our villain of the movie, played by the great Michael Pena. Oh, this is insane! This is insane! I'm going insane! Well, you're certainly acting insane. We also have with us uh, Rob Delaney, and he has come on board to play Mr. Dubrose. Well, this is a disaster. Oh, yeah. We also have Colin Jost, um, who plays, uh, he's the groom. I am playing the character of Ben. It's just as exciting as the name implies. <laughs> I've been getting really into cricket. You're doing great. Colin Jost. Good hair. This was uh, my first day of filming with Michael Pena and Chloe Grace Moretz. And they, along with Tim Story, they're like the main reasons I wanted to do this film because um, I re I'm just a big fan of their work. Action! You're messing with the wrong chef! Just the ensemble that we have in this film has been really phenomenal and the thing that I've enjoyed the most so far. Morning! So I've been watching Michael and Chloe as well. There's such a freedom in the way they work that they allow, they don't let um, what's on the page restrict them from what they can do. Like my father always said, hotel is family. Of course, when he worked here, he worked with his cousins too, so it was kind of confusing what he meant. Right. Tim sets the stage in a way that is really open and really safe, and there's never a no, you can't do that, or no, that's not right. It's always yes and, yes and, yes and. Chloe and I like staying on book, doing our job, and the boys are just going for it. Improv, improv, improv. Ah! This, that, we're just like, okay, any second now we'll say outline. No, no, no. 
Now we'll say, no, okay, we'll just stop. We'll just let them go. I'm working on a big finale. Like, I got peacocks, I got snakes. snakes. Um, a chimpanzee that does close-up magic, which should really impress the snakes. You know those exotic birds in Florida, the large one that killed its owner? I've got two of those. I think the best part about working on this film is definitely the fact that I get to act with stuffed animals and cardboard cutouts of animals. I've been mainly, I guess, concentrating on Spike, the character of Spike the dog. I get to be with Spike. I grew up watching Tom Childhood and Jerry. dream, honestly. Pleases me, pleases me greatly. All the animals in this film will be animated. And all human people, like me, are whatever I am, you know, real. We've got elephants, we've got tigers, we've got peacocks, we've got uh, butterflies, we've got insects. They go to the Museum of Natural History and there's a diorama of a saber-toothed tiger and it's a cartoon. It's been a really interesting experience being able to act opposite at sometimes nothing, um, sometimes a stick. <laughs> stick with a card. And sometimes puppeteers. Tom, may we have a moment? Just for a quick, if you could. Tom. Tom, do you want to skedaddle there for a, thank you. Never a dull moment, to say the least. Oh, we were just gonna... oh God, oh, this hey, is my EPK. Sir, excuse me. Oh, Producer. you had one Carry on through this Carry on talking field. about us. <laughs> well, we bring a couple of other characters to our movie as well. Some that um, are in the history of Tom and Jerry, uh, one being Goldie. <laughs> We're gonna see Toots again, and Toots is actually my cat. And Toots and Tom have a little spark of their own. I would describe Tom as a little bit of a hopeless romantic. Toots and Tom definitely have like a time together, which is always kind of awkward because Toots is not interested. We have Droopy the dog in here. Hello. Don't ask me to do an impression, I'm not. No. Hello. Maybe you can ADR that, make put the real droopy voice in there. Make me look good. Obviously we have Spike. Who is beloved. Who's Colin's character's disgusting dog. If someone is a diehard viewer of Tom and Jerry, they will say to me, oh my God, you get to have Spike. Even though he's stinky and has a flatulence problem. I'm pooping the poop, huh? But it's okay. I think all of these characters help illuminate the main characters. They either give you an idea of what the plot of the cartoon is going to be like, who they side with, who Jerry decides to side with. I do these movies because I have a 10-year-old, and when I told him, you know, what, what do you think about Tom and Jerry, like a live action thing, and I give him the gist of it, like the synopsis, he says, oh, that would be so cool. I'm like, awesome, then I'm gonna go do it. I think there's a universal story at work here. In the end of the chase, there's always good comes of it. Sorry! There's still that bond and that love there, you know? I think that's what people identify with. The core of it, they're the most important people to each other. And they would probably fight to defend their relationship above even any of the elements of their rivalry. When you've been battling so long, you realize the person I know the most is actually this person I've been battling the whole time.